I mean, how with, with what we have today, well, obviously there's far more technology, not really necessarily used in this case. We have ring doorbell cameras, all these things that should have been looked at that weren't. Uh, but we're going to go back and we're going to rely on some of, of these testimonies from people that that are likely not going to be the the most accurate. Why is it uh, that that memory is so flawed? Uh, you know, obviously it was used forever uh, as, you know, this is, you know, the, the golden rule. It's obviously not so yeah. much anymore. But what is it? What, what, what are our, our brains actually doing when we are recalling something? Um, and, and we're trying to accurately then convey that to someone that's that's asking. And, and how how dramatically different can that that recollection be from reality? It's it's dramatic. And we've learned so much more about the brain in the last even 10 years, but certainly in the last 20 years. We used to think that it, it was like you saw an event happen and then it was like a, a digital recording or video camera recording this event and storing it away in a file in your head. Mm -hmm. And it really doesn't work that way. Our, our brains are storytelling machines and we take perceptions, which often perceptions can be flawed, and our minds create stories about what we think happened. And this is why people can be so suggestible, and a lot of memory research has been done, telling people telling people as children a story that something happened, and then you come back to them five years later and say, did this ever happen? And they tell it to you as if it was real. Mm -hmm. It's also why you'll see people raised in the same home, you know, siblings by the same parents, but they'll each have entirely different representations of their upbringing and the things that they did as children. They remember things differently. They view their parents differently. And so memory is incredibly fallible. And yeah. it, it just makes it, in court cases, criminal issues, highly problematic. People will will manufacture things, and it's not even intentional. It's just mm -hmm. the way the brain does it. I, I, one a reference I guess I can make is sometimes you, you look at a picture from childhood and, and you clearly could not have met, like remembered the situation, especially when you're super, super young. Uh, but sometimes you go, oh, yeah, I totally remember that. Are, are we mm -hmm. truly like remembering that or is it exactly what you said? It, it's the data that we have in front of us. And then our brain is conjuring this up saying, oh, yes, of course you do. But it's all just based on. This, this little piece of information, which is the picture that then fills in the blanks. Yeah, I, I can swear my earliest memory was when I was 15 months old and I was hospitalized for anemia for mm -hmm. a few days. And my mother told me when I was a little girl, oh, back when you were in the hospital, it was so scary. And now I swear I can remember that. Mm -hmm. um, is that real or is that just a story because I was told a story and so my brain has created these because I have visual images about it. Um, I don't have any way of knowing, but I, I wouldn't take that memory into a court case and give testimony on it. What about blocking out memories? I mean, this was obviously a traumatic event um, for obviously for John O'Keefe as he died. Um, but if you you were drunk, you hit somebody uh, assuming, let's just assume she did hit him and, and maybe didn't realize it. Could it also be a case of where, oh my God, it was so traumatic that, that someone blocks that out. You hear it quite a bit, you know, I blocked out this memory. It was traumatic, this or that. What is our brain doing in situations like that? We're literally, you know, we were there, we were cognizant of it, but now the recollection is really gone. Uh, you yeah. know, and, and can that be brought back in any sort of accurate way? That's a really controversial area, you know, because there has been so much um, bad therapy, we'll say, in decades past with false memory syndrome mm -hmm. and people making suggestions to people like, the, you know, the big one was the satanic panic in the mm -hmm. 80s, you know, the, about satanic ritual abuse and therapists, uh, some with paranoia th themselves who had some problems, were making suggestions to people that if you have X, Y, and Z symptoms, that means you were sexually molested or ritually abused by Satanists. And then people would create memories. And, you know, there were lawsuits over this. And unfortunately, a lot of bad therapists lost their licenses, which, mm -hmm. you know, should have happened. But um, it's it's speculative in many ways. We do know that in certain events, 
when people are very overwhelmed with um, stimuli and something awful has happened in the environment, it's just as if the thinking brain shuts down and the emotional brain is still there, but they lose that ability to remember it. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, um, Karen was certainly in a blackout, and we do know people can function in blackouts sometimes for hours, drive around in their cars go to bars, hang out with friends. I had a, a, an old friend who he would stand upright. He didn't, um, you know, wave as he walked. He seemed perfectly normal. He drove all over the place. He never got a DUI, but then he wouldn't remember the next day anything that he had done or said. You know, he would call up and say, where was I last night? What was I doing? It was horrifying to watch you know, and oh, yeah. so people can go for many hours and not have any recollection of what they did. Is the mind recording things at that point in time? Or I mean, or no. is it like 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 it is blacked out? Like it's it's not necessarily repressed. It's no. just making it's a reference. It's just gone. It's just not yeah. there. It's like nobody it's put the tape there. in and pressed record. They pressed record, but there was no tape in there to be recording. Exactly. Onto. Exactly. One of one of my my big I have my little preachy areas and and excessive alcohol use is one of my areas just because I've seen so many horror stories with, you know, people waking up naked in bed with a stranger, mm -hmm. having no idea who is this person and how did I get here? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just, you know, binge drinking and going into blackout states is just incredibly dangerous, awful. No good ever comes out of it. Yeah. Awful things happen. <laughs> Robin Drake, who is another contributor on the show the other day had a great line about that saying no one ever says damn if i would have only drinking a little bit more things would have been right. so much better right yeah, yeah exactly hey thanks for checking out the video be sure to follow us wherever you download podcasts and especially apple podcasts where you can get advanced episode and premium content on our premium channel right there also be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss any breaking updates on the stories that matter to you most we're on tiktok x instagram facebook just search hidden killers podcast with tony brewski and you'll find us right there again thanks for watching